Howdy guys. Welcome to the Winter Circle. I'm your host, Dr. Sean Hubbard. As you're aware, on the Winter Circle, we like to focus on the challenges of the day. Some of those are societal, some are interpersonal, and some are, some are personal. Uh, today we're going to focus on the challenges that we're all dealing with, really, and those being the, the year that we've had, been a lot of challenges, a lot of um, things that we're really not that familiar with, and it's made us wonder about the road ahead. And when I thought about, let's see now, what is it that we all could benefit from? And what is it that we all could probably do more of? Uh, the answer to my own rhetorical question was that we could all probably keep moving forward. And so I thought, who best to bring that message other than the persistence coach? And when I thought that and had that thought, I have a colleague and friend uh, over on the East Coast, I'm sorry, on the West Coast, on the opposite coast from us, Dr. Lee. Dr. Clarence Lee, and he's going to join us today. I'm really excited to have him here. Dr. Lee, welcome to the Winter Circle. So great to have you. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, looking forward to adding some value and uh, some encouragement where I can. I'm sure you'll be able to, just from being yourself, actually. You know, I've been following you over the past couple of years on social media, on LinkedIn, and I know that you're heavy on uh, keep pressing, keep moving, and I've been following that, and I've noticed even though we've had all of these different things that have happened, uh, changes in um, the weather, changes in seasons, changes in challenges, uh, you have been really consistent with your messaging. And so it's very clear that your words match your attitude, your attitude uh, seems to match you know, com uh, completely your, uh, what you've been able to do with your own life. I mean, you know, a, a flight surgeon, a physician, entrepreneur, a speaker, author, you got a lot going on. So we can really learn from you. And uh, so that's why I'm so happy to have you on. How did you become the persistence coach? Where did that come from? It, um, it, it really starts with um, my story. So um, I, one of the common stories, and I, I, when I share, I, I share from a, a different perspective. I like to highlight uh, the struggles in my life. I like to highlight my failures. So when I go out and I speak, instead of talking a lot about the accolades and things I've been able to do, what I really focus on are some of the challenging times. And one of the main stories that I share is uh, my my kind of pathway to get into medical school. So I ended, ended up taking me five years to get into medical school. I applied to every medical school for five years in a row. So over 500 applications wow. um, and uh, finally ended up getting in after, after five years. Mm -hmm. What I learned in that time um, was really the, the mindset that has allowed me to do a lot of other things in my life. And the core principle of that is persistence. So I, I started, um, when I, when, I, when, I, when I got into intern year uh, of, in general surgery, I'm looking around. Uh, I don't see a lot of, uh, I don't see a lot of African-Americans in the, in the residency. Mm -hmm. and, I, and this is how it all started. So then I say to myself, you know, what can I do to start helping in this area? I'm working so hard yeah. to be a success for myself. I owe something to my community. How can I help? So I started mentoring. Um, I don't. I don't really come from a lot. So um, come from a typical, you know, black ghetto. What you would see that that's that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in San Antonio at the time. I said, "Where's the worst part? Where's the worst? Where's the worst place?" Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go there and start doing some work. Mm -hmm. Started mentoring. Mm -hmm. From there, word got around. I was mentoring. Started getting speaking uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, kept telling my share. Kept telling my story. Kept telling my story. Mm -hmm. um, and this core concept of persistence started to bubble up over and over again every time i spoke it was it was like it kept coming out and it wasn't intentional in the beginning right um so then that led to creating more content for college students writing a book entitled persist and creating the persist institute mm. where i teach people um pretty much how to persist through challenges and it's, it's basically resilience training and um, that's what i do now wow wow you know, I, that's a perfect story, and I totally understand it. Um, you know, we've all had our, our roads and our challenges, and some are not the same as others, we could say, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I get totally what you're saying. I heard you say on one of your videos also that your uh, capacity, uh, your optimism, and your uh, personality is kind of your gift uh, to the world. And I thought, what a wonderful thing, you know. Um, it reminded me of once when a friend of mine in high school actually said, you know, 
what's really lucky about you is that you know what you want to do with your life, you know? And so it reminded me of that. How do you recommend people find what their own talents and gifts are that they can offer to the world? It's a great question, and it is something that um, people ask me a lot because uh, I'm pretty fired up about what I do. I'm pretty excited about what I do. I wake up wanting to do that. And a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't know exactly what I want to do. Um, so when I first started, that was a very common question. What made you want to be a doctor? What made you want to speak? What made you want to do this? And I would tell my story. And so I actually created a, a, a formula. I call it the, the purpose-focused formula. And I created an online course where I teach people how to find that purpose. But quickly, um, it, for me, and, and what I teach is that your purpose which is really your service. So I'll say that too. Your purpose is really your service. So when you're in your purpose, you are going to be serving people. So that's the first piece. Mm -hmm. But it's at a connection between your passions. Passion is something you get excited about, something that you could do for hours upon hours and lose time. You, somebody starts talking about it. You want to talk about it. Th those are some things that may be an indicator that you're passionate about something. Mm -hmm. You match your passions with your pain. And this is one of the areas where a lot of people kind of skip over. They don't want to talk about their pain. They don't want to talk about the things they've been through. It's like, oh, I'm past that. What I have found in my life is that my pain is actually where I have the most fuel. It's where I have the most power because I've been through something in that area. Right. Ex main example is I talk about persistence where I had a lot of pain in failing and failing and failing and having to persist. So now when I share a message of persistence, I share from a position of power mm. because I have been through a lot so I can teach about that. So you connect your, your, um, your passions, your pain, and you and your potential, which your potentials are your gifts. Mm -hmm. So the things that you can do that people say, wow, you're really good at that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that just comes kind of natural to you. Mm -hmm. People have gifts and you can develop gifts as well. Mm -hmm. But most people, you know what you're good at. Yeah. So it's a connection between those two. Mm -hmm. So if you can overlap an area where you're passionate about, for me, just give example, really passionate about encouraging people. I have a lot of pain and discouragement, which I'll probably share about later. Is I got discouraged a lot as I was a kid. Um, have a lot of pain in that area. Um, my gifts are people. I'm a people person, mm. so I like to communicate. And so that's kind of how I found my purpose to be the encourager and a coach. Mm. Excellent, excellent. And so it sounds like I'm just um, imagining, I know you're a coach, and I've seen your activity with coaching, and um, I've been checking you out, looking at everything that you put out there. Um, over time, but also, uh, especially recently, as I was getting to know you more, um, it sounds very clear that you are able to help people get over, over humps, you know. And so one of the questions that I have then is, um, I saw that you wrote down that most people sign up for compromise. And um, in reading this, I had an idea what that meant for me, but I didn't want to uh, just interpret that of my own. So what is that? What did you mean when you said that most people sign up for compromise? Yeah, this is and this is one of the, the, the core principles that I, I go out and I, I speak about because if you ask, you know, nine out of 10 people, 99 out of 100 people, uh, are you living your dream? Are you living your passion? The majority of people will say no. The conversation usually goes like this. I really wanted to do this when I was younger, mm. but then such and such happened. So therefore mm. I had to do this now. Mm. Right. And so there's always a little story that somebody has in their life about why the compromise came in mm. and they justify compromising based on some story they tell themselves. Now we've all been through stuff. It's not to, to, to belittle, belittle what someone has been through, right. but it's to understand that there has at some point there was a compromise you signed up for and you rationalized in your head that this was okay mm -hmm. and and i would say this is 99 percent of the population mm -hmm. we have been conditioned right. to not believe that we can live our dreams and that living your dreams is only for a certain amount you know the celebrity or a few people um mm -hmm. and i i personally do not agree with that and I feel like every person has gifts, and I, I want to see each person living that out in the world. Right, right.
right. You know, you just reminded me of uh, my father. He just mentioned recently that, you know, when he uh, decided that he was going to improve his health and when he decided that he was going to um, um, improve everything, really, you know, his mobility, uh, he had just had hip surgery, actually. And he said, you know, um, at some point, I made it OK to get old, you know. And, um, but then he heard himself do that, and he decided that, you know, it, it's not OK. And he still had dreams that he wanted to live. And so I definitely hear what you're talking about. It's really pretty common, and it sounds really insidious um, that things happen. Um, we don't like them. They're not what we planned on. Um, we get insulted by it. Or we feel the pain. And then we take kind of a turn in the road that is really not toward the dreams that we initially had. Do I understand you correctly that way? Absolutely. And I think that's a very common uh, a thread. But in the, in the Persist Institute and, and, and what I teach is how do you take those moments and continue to improve or, or to continue to see what's the lesson in those moments and how that's actually going to help you to continue to push forward. I think that's the disconnect. Some, some folks see it as uh, a roadblock that can't be overcome, and I teach ways for you to do that. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now, the people that you're seeing uh, benefit from your coaching the most, uh, do they tend to be uh, men, um, women, what's their profile like, the people that are really enjoying fundamental uh, change and measurable change and whatnot? You know, and it, it's, it's, I, I've always been entrepreneurial, um, but when I, when I started coaching, I didn't intend to, to focus on that. But what I have seen is a lot of entrepreneurs that want to come my way. So these are folks that might be in a professional career that have an idea for a business or a passion project that somebody wants to monetize or something that somebody wants to bring, bring to fruition. So I work with a lot of professionals who are entrepreneurial minded. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, 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 the common profile, somebody maybe has a nine to five mm -hmm. who wants to start like a side hustle or a passion business. And so I help, I help them do that. So, but the majority of them are entrepreneurs and the coaching is really around um, continuing to press and believe in that dream of that business that you want to create, um, monetize it and make it profitable. Mm, that's perfect because it sounds like these are times when we all need to be um, doing more. I mean, you know, can any of us really stand to just sit on talents that we have and on dreams that we have uh, just because we have a nine to five? You know, so it sounds like it's, uh, this is a good time for you to be doing what you're doing and also a uh, time to be really busy. <laughs> Yes, it's busy. It's it's busy. I'm I'm a, I'm a father of five as well. You probably hear some of my little ones uh, r rolling around in the background here, um, but um, you know I I really believe that you know, too many of us kind of subscribe to a, you know this is what I do, and you might describe your job and that's what I do. Some people say what do you do, and most people have one answer for that. Um, and I I personally um, believe that we all have tons of talents and. Um, we are we were created to be multi-talented and bring value to the world in, in a various different ways it's always been interesting to me how you'll have maybe like a, a an nba player or a, a or an entertainer who now does something in fashion now they do something in business now they do something in real estate yes. now they're an investor now they have a fashion line and people are like how is it that they can do oh they only do it because they're celebrity they're just doing it. no these are multi-talented people right. who have funneled mm -hmm. energy into their talents and so they're bringing value to the world in, in several different ways i believe the average nine to five non-celebrity person can bring value to the world the same exact way That's and, I, and i encourage that perfect perfect yeah i hear what you're saying and i think it makes a ton of sense you know um People have asked me down through the years a big question uh, when it comes to, let's say, diversifying. Um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, we'll take a break and a commercial break and come back, and then I'm going to ask you, Dr. Lee, that big question. <laughs> we'll be back in a few moments.
So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. Welcome back to the Winter Circle. I'm your host, Dr. Sean Hubbard. We've been talking, talking with Dr. Clarence Lee. He's been giving us a ton of information on where we can get back on the road to our dreams, really. He helps a lot of people uh, get back on the road to their dreams, helps them to get over their own uh, blocks, their own stumbling blocks, uh, however they look at them. He's been really helping us with that. Um, it's a time that we really need to, a lot of us need to and want to diversify bring on some other endeavors, um, some other modalities, develop some other talents that we have so that we can become more of what we can uh, fulfill our potential. The big question, Dr. Lee, is when a person wants to, let's say they have a nine to five, as you said, um, they have a family, uh, they have a career, but they know that they want to add something on, um, they know they need to actually the big question I've had, and for you, is how do you bring on these other modalities, given that we have to keep the lights on? Uh, you know, how, how do you do that, actually? This is um, such a good question. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to answer it, because it's, it's a very common question for people. And it's one that I get a lot. How do you do so many things? And honestly, whenever I start with a, with a, with a coaching client, like that, this is the first thing that I do. Like the very first thing I say, Hey, let's look at the, let's look at the calendar. Let's see how you're spending your time because it really boils down to in a simple statement, time mastery or, or time management. That is the key to putting multiple things in, but you first have to find where you're wasting a lot of time or you're not being as efficient as you can be with your time. And so one of the things that I, I, I teach and I do myself is I call it waking up to your dreams. Many of us, when we decide what time we're going to go to bed, when we decide what time we're going to wake up, it's based on what time we have to be at work. So in our minds, we are waking up to work and if that work is not our passion if that work is not our dreams you say well why are you waking up at nine well i gotta be at work at 10 man what? that's why i'm waking up at nine i'm gonna sleep until i gotta shower my commute whatever i gotta do mm -hmm. what i teach is to take that back and control the front end of your day go to sleep at a time where you can wake up and dream. I call it dream chasing in the morning before you go to work. So when people ask me, why am I waking up? This is just one of the things I do, but this is a way for me to carve out. If I can get somebody, I can carve out two hours in the morning. If I can get you to consistently give me two hours, that's 10 hours a week, maybe 12 hours a week if we're going six days, you give me that for a month, I can help you make some major, major momentum. Wow. But it starts with, waking up to that dream and dream chasing in the morning. So that's one of the things, but it really comes down to time management. Many of us, um, many of us are not as efficient as we can be. Yes. And part of that is that there's not initiative 
for t- huge chunks of our day are not intentionally spent going towards something. Um, and, and that's what I, I help people do. That's the first thing I help people do uh, when, when they start coaching with me. Wow. Okay, that's perfect. And it makes tons of sense, you know. Um, and I like that dream, chase, dream chasing idea that you mentioned in the morning, you know. And that I hadn't really thought about it quite like that, but that is when I tend to get most of my dream chasing done, you know. Um, you put your finger on something there. Um, I have associated it with my running activity or I associate it with my uh, shower because those tend to happen before everybody else wakes up in the morning. Um, but you're right, I'm chasing my dreams in the morning. I'm getting my downloads there. Um, not a lot of other agendas going on. Beeper's not going off. I don't have to answer any calls. You're right, that's a, that's a great time to really bang it out. And um, I, I like that, I like that. So you've been- Yeah, and it's, 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 time, it's a time, mm-hmm. um, at, like, so I've, I've got five kids, yeah. wife, um, you know, in my house is, 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 is crazy the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Like the majority of the day, mm-hmm. boom, screaming, this one fell down, this yeah. one's hungry, I need, this one's diaper needs to be changed, this one. And so once everybody's to bed and, 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 and there's quiet time, then I can get my sleep. In the early morning hours is when it's quiet. The kids are asleep, wife's asleep. Okay, let me hone in, connect to what I'm trying to do and realize that, hey, as I'm working, the people that are sleeping mm-hmm. are, are the benefactors, right? So right. It, it, it's, it's, for me, it's, just, it's, a, it's an incredible time in the morning mm-hmm. to, make, to make magic happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I teach people, you know, start with the first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. Because if you try to put stuff off at the end of the day, yeah. if you try to say, hey, you know, yeah. your, your day could get hijacked like that. I mean, like, boom, you got a fire come up, Definitely. something pops up, oh, I had this, this went late, this patient encounter went too long, I had something at the office, then all of a sudden it doesn't get done, doesn't get done, doesn't get done. That's right. On the reverse, let me get it done first. Yes. No fires are coming. Right. But I've already started my day with momentum. I'm already winning. Yes. It's, it's six, seven, eight. I'm already winning. Perfect. You know, so then it's just what I have found is as you build that momentum, mm-hmm. you go into your day with momentum. Mm-hmm. I see my first patient. I'm, I already have momentum for the day. Mm. So it just rolls, it rolls, it rolls for win after win after win after win. So I know we're on the winter circle. So yes, this sir. is what this is how you set your days up for wins. I love it uh, in the morning. So yeah, I love it. I love it. And you're saying um, dream chasing in the morning. Um, but what I hear also is that you're managing your priorities because in order to get up in the morning, then that means you're uh, making sure you're getting restorative sleep at night. And then you're, <laughs> so you're managing what time you go to bed and what time other people go to bed also. You have kids. So we're, we're doing a lot of management, sounds like. Absol- absolutely. And, you know, many times, a lot of people, you go online, a lot of people preach hustle, hustle, grind, 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 no sleep, team, no sleep, you know, and I see this, and, you know, for me, that is one of the most unproductive strategies for me, like, I need my sleep, we are built to sleep, sleep is restorative, sleep is what gives us our our energy, Mm -hmm. our vitality, this is when we rejuvenate, Mm -hmm. and so I'm a huge proponent of sleep, Mm -hmm. And, and I get eight hours of sleep, Yes. Yes. On the regular, wow. because if I don't, right. I cannot be. And everybody's different. Sure. I can't be me. Right. If right. if I'm tired, my my energy I'm bringing to the day, yes. it's not the same. Sure. I'm, my smile might is not the same right. if I if I have not had my sleep. <laughs> and so for me, I, I definitely prioritize the sleep. And if if that means going to bed eight thirty, nine thirty, so that I can get up at five thirty. Perfect. Then hey. If it's coming on late, I'm in the bed, you know what I'm saying? Right, (laughs) right, right. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Do you see any difference between men and women um, with these duties and um, priorities, time management, or is it basically uh, the same ballgame? Huge differences. Okay. Uh, some, I don't want to get you in trouble. My, <laughs> my, some of my male clients are the most notorious uh-huh. of not wanting to be pinned down. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I say, hey, give me the give me the time hacks. I want to see what you're doing every couple of hours, and it that is like pulling teeth of, uh, a lot with with the men. Mm. Uh, women, on the other hand, 
uh, they, they, they tend to, with my clients, they'll tend to, to subscribe to the, to the schedule or the consistency a little easier, but I see huge differences. Um, but w with the, sometimes, uh, with some clients, some, some men, especially doctors, uh -huh. Uh -huh. especially doctors that I work with, right. um, it, it'll take four weeks, but it'll take a month before I get them, get the carve out the time where I can get them, get them on the schedule, wow. tighten up the schedule. It sometimes it takes four weeks, five weeks. Wow. Uh, to get them to buy in, yes. but I, I have I have seen some some huge differences between uh, the men and women when it when it comes to to, to the scheduling and, and time management. I see. Wow, goodness. Yeah, you know, um, I see that ladies tend to be better consumers of health information, health products. Um, just what does it take to help me do better, me and my family? You know, they just seem to be doing. A better job at that and I've been trying to figure out a way to really reach men and I mm. kind of got the sense that you are able to do it well uh, when I look through your um, posts and your whatever you put out there I see a lot of guys gravitate to it I see a lot of guys uh, it, it resonates with a lot of brothers and a lot of guys a lot of men and uh, what is it that you do to help them uh, get where they want to go, men particular. This is a um, this is such a you have such good questions, man. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, I, I personally um, I, I have a passion for for men. Um, and I, I have a passion for um, the, the 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 male's position in our world, and I really believe in uh, the leadership capacity. I really believe in the provider capacity that men have. And um, when a man is on, and not, not that it's not for women, but we're talking about men. Sure. When I see a, a man that is lit up with passion, mm -hmm. a man that is lit up, uh, uh, knows his purpose, knows where he fits into the world, mm -hmm. how he leads mm -hmm. himself, how he leads his family, mm -hmm how he the type of leader he is with his children mm -hmm. is it's night and day the men that are lost if you will are not quite sure of their place those are the ones that aren't as confident they aren't as assertive and they don't tend to be as successful mm -hmm. um and so if i can give um, a, a man um if i can give him his power back if I can say, here, here's your purpose. Here's where you fit. Here's how you're making an impact in the world. Here's where you matter. Here is how you matter at home. Here's how you matter with your kids. Here is how you live in your purpose is going to affect your child. Here is how you going out, knocking on that door, beating that no again is going to affect your family. Here is how you persisting to go after that business is now going to set up a legacy that comes behind you. There is um, so much when I, you know, that I bring, I'm a man, you know, so it's like, I'm biased, those are, that's the how I view and I see things. Mm -hmm. um, but that is what I like to share in my messaging mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that that power is there. It's just a matter of us taking a, taking a grasp of it and walking into the world with that every day. Perfect, man, that's wonderful, you know. That's wonderful, you know, uh, the way you talk about it, your manner of talking about it, um, it's exactly what I think that we need more of. And uh, I really appreciate that, receive that from you. And um, I recognize, just hearing that, you know, I recognize that that is a big, there's a big deficit uh, in the world and yes. in our communities with that kind of information. So I appreciate that. And I look forward, maybe we can collaborate um, more on that, you know. We'd um, love to. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think we should do that. And, uh, Dr. Lee, where can people follow you? You have a lot of great information. It's all healthy. You know, I can totally vouch because I've been following you for years now. You're always consistent. Uh, no wishy-washy going on. I don't care what the weather is. I don't care pandemic on, off. You know, you keep it happening, uh, persisting, you know. Where can people yes. follow you uh, to get coaching and um, even I think you have some online courses and whatnot? Yes, yeah. So uh, my my main website is is, is clarenceleejr. dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find links to my online courses, applications for uh, coaching, and social media profiles. But Clarence Clarence Lee Jr. is my website, and 
all the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, uh, uh, is, is, is at Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. So Dr. is DR and then Jr. is just JR. But on all social media platforms, Google Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. and I will pop up. Okay, okay, that's wonderful. And I will be uh, definitely sharing this message on my channels and I'll make sure that people connect with you because we need more of you and your message and uh, it's great for our communities and particularly at this time we need to keep moving forward and keep what do you say keep pressing keep pressing you keep know pressing. and if if people are interested in um you know persist institute or want to learn more about it just simply go to go to persistinstitute.com um and you can you can sign up there for a free entry entry course um, where, I, where I teach people about how to bring more resilience, how to find their purpose. A lot of the things that we talked about, but I go a little more in depth on it. Yeah. So uh, you visit persistinstitute.com and and you can you can sign up for uh, for some free training there as well. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for coming into the Winter Circle, Dr. Lee. Look forward to working with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me, brother. Absolutely. And for you in the Winter Circle, thank you so much for watching. I'm sure that you got a lot from Dr. Lee's presentation. Uh, he's very solid, he's obviously very sincere, and this is his consistent message. What you saw here is what you're going to get more of. I think we need more of it. Um, I'm certainly excited about it myself, and that's why I was really excited to have him in the Winter Circle as kind of a therapy, really, at this time. The show will be airing Monday, 2 p.m., Tuesday, 6 p.m. on RVN TV, but of course I'll be posting it. You can find it at drshawnhubbard.com. I'm going to be posting this everywhere because I think it's needed everywhere. We'll see you next week. Until then, keep winning.